can you switch off? You can never, you can pretend to switch off, you can pretend to play with your kids or watch another sport, but in the back of your mind is always that relegation, that threat of relegation. So you can try, but you can never fully switch off. What about West Ham? I'd be disappointed. I mean, the, the injuries uh, are a big blow to them. But they've got a chance next week against Chelsea. Mm. If they can beat they Chelsea, have... they stay in there. Do you think they can beat Chelsea? <laughs> well, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see, of course. We'll have to wait and see. Who knows in this Premier League yeah. anymore? So, if we're saying Newcastle pretty much safe, West Ham, will they finish in the top four? I want a yes or no. <sighs> no. No. No? No. OK. I we'll think Liverpool, have... Liverpool and Chelsea are just... Yeah. That much stronger. Yeah. We'll have to They're wait and well. see. Well, just to update, you're making a habit of this coming off the bench and scoring important goals. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to help the team, you know, again. I mean, uh, I thought the boys played well and we sat a bit deep um, in the second half and I thought they came on to us, so I was happy to come on and score the winner. I think it was your second touch. You'd had one before, but is that your best second touch, best involvement coming off the bench? <laughs> I mean, the first touch was a bit rusty. <laughs> Sitting on the bench for 70 minutes is, can get rusty, but... It well, I was happy. I'm, I was working on my head, and so I was happy it, it paid off today. Yeah, second touch definitely wasn't rusty. Um, it has been a, a change in formation over the last three games. Is that the big difference to this sort of upturn in, in form? I mean, you can see the way they were playing, you know. Um, we're trying to, we're getting involved in the game way more than we was before, you know. We're controlling games more, we're having more opportunities, and I think like today we showed what we can do, you know. Um, I think if we continue to do this, we'll be safe for sure. You've not been at the club that long, but what else has changed to, to bring what seems to be a real collective effort to the squad right now? I mean, everyone's buying into what the manager wants to do, you know. Um, everyone's trying to play their part and everyone's pushing each other, whether you're on the bench, whether you're not in the squad or whether you're on the pitch, you know, you have to push each other and that's what we're trying to do. I feel like collectively we've grown and um, through the hard times we decided that we have to stick together, you know, um, and that's what we're trying to do now. A massive three points yet again. Do you feel you're safe or is it dangerous to start thinking that? I mean, I'm, we're taking every game as it comes, you know, game by game. We want to keep on pushing, you know, keep on getting three points, keep on being involved in games. And hopefully if we play like that, I feel like we'll be safe. All the best. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you. Smiles all round for Joe Willock and a big moment for him to earn his team three points and the crucial three points at that. So West Ham down to 10 men going into the second half. We knew it was a mountain to climb. But they showed some fight, grit yeah, and determination. Absolutely. And we did say, could there be a comeback? We've seen so many comebacks this year. And um, you can see here, Bowen picking a ball up. There's no pressure on him. So he whips in a really good cross. And Diop gets the header in. Perhaps the keeper can do a little bit better. But look at the centre-halves, uh, Newcastle. In the end, it just leaves one of them with two, two players. Look, to Mark. And Bowen's got a lot of time to pick the cross out. It's a really good cross, but there's no pressure on the ball. The centre halves are split, the three centre halves are split, free header, and they're back in the game, West Ham. Deep yeah. making up for the own goal yeah. as well in the first half, but then came the penalty incident. This is a handball on Kieran Clark. What did you think, Andros, when you saw this? By the letter of the law, it has to be a penalty because his arm's above his head. But for me, when you jump, you have to use your arms. Both his arms are up in the air because he's still in a jumping motion. There's nowhere for his arms to go. Uh, Suchek is right there. His arms can't come back down. In a way, the ball's hit his arm. He hasn't made a movement. His arms has not made a movement to the ball. His arms is there. Both his arms are up in the air because he's still in a jumping motion. There's nowhere for his arms to go. Uh, Suchek is right there. His arms can't come back down. In a way, the ball's hit his arm. He hasn't made a movement. His arms has not made a movement to the ball. His arms is there because he's jumping. He's in a jumping motion, so his arms are above his head. Similar to Suchek. Suchek. Yeah, exactly what Arms are above his head. And How that... can you jump without putting your hands up? You can't. And myself and Alan spoke before the game about you need football, footballing people in that, um, in, in that, uh, with the, the VAR guys to make that decision, to see that. They'll see that straight away. Listen, there's it, nowhere for his arms to go. No penalty. Move on. But we had this game after game, and luckily for Newcastle's sake, it didn't it didn't uh, take any points away from them. Is it a penalty? I'll leave you up to Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Let me I mean, tell you. you. <laughs> uh, listen, I think his, ar his arm's gone up, his, his leverage has gone up. If he hadn't have done that, then Suchek might have got the first touch. That's probably what VAR are thinking, that Suchek could have got the first touch and the header could have been goal-bound.
But, you know, we, we wait for these decisions every week now. As a player, sorry, I'm going to continue. As a player, yeah. there's no other way you can jump. You can't jump without your arms. You jump your arms up in the air. He's not moved his arms to the ball. As he's jumped, the ball's come in and his arms are still above his head from the jump. Yeah. So for me, you have to take that into consideration. For me, it's not a penalty. Yeah, I can imagine for the players, especially for you, because you're you can the hear it in my league, voice. It's frustrating. <laughs> I know, we could talk about this forever, but let's talk about West Ham, because at that moment, did you think they'd come back to win it? Yes. Well, not so much win it, but they were back. And, and it was a consequence on Newcastle being two up, such a massive game, not quite knowing what to do in the second half. And I like the first, they sat back and invited pressure and paid the price. Whenever they counter-attacked, well, before it, when it was 2-0, it fizzled out and nothing really happened. And they gave West Ham the advantage. And at 2-0, I thought at least West Ham would be good for a draw. Yeah, listening to the commentary, Jim Beglin actually said that West Ham will be proud of that performance mm. and at least they can walk away knowing they gave that fight. Do you think they'll reflect on it in that way? At this stage of the season, when you've got a winnable game in their eyes, you've got Chelsea next... Needing a win, I don't think they can see it that way. You can't take positives. It's a points at it, business end of the season. It's all about points, and unfortunately, um, they lost the three points that they would have been looking at and targeting three points. Unfortunately, they, they can't really take much solace from that. So it's two all. We thought the fight back was on from West Ham, but then what changed for Newcastle? Well, I, they obviously were stunned into you know pu pushing forward because they'd been quite negative up, up until then. But as the ball goes out to, to Richard, it's a fantastic cross. Take, take nothing away from the cross. And Willock's got above Johnson. Johnson's not really made a, a real strong effort. And it was a really good goal in the end. But, you know, as it goes out to, to Richard, can Soufal get out there a bit quicker? He offers his body to try and stop the cross. It's a great cross. And Willock wants it a little bit more than Johnson. I think it's, it's funny for, for me because obviously Matt Ritchie has the left wing back for the whole Newcastle a couple of wins away from being in the top, like being 12th. <laughs> you, you know what? You know, if they, no, <laughs> and, and sometimes you can finish the season strongly, the last four or five games, and you can jump four or five positions. So that's what Newcastle will be looking at now. I'm here celebrating Newcastle's winner and they're only three <laughs> points behind us. <laughs> I've got to be worried now. <laughs> Actually, when Callum Wilson was talking in that VT we ran earlier, it was interesting because he said either relegation can break you as a team or it can actually bring you yeah. together. And you're seeing this team really coming together when it matters most. It does help that Wilson yeah. and some maximum are back there as well. Yeah, and I've been in dress rooms. I've been relegated twice with QPR firstly and then Newcastle. And both those times, like Callum spoke about, it, you, uh, there becomes divisions in the dressing room, the English lads uh, go to one side and the foreign imports go to another side and it's not really a great team cohesion. Um, but f look, thankfully, by the looks of, by the sounds of what Callum Wilson's saying, um, those, those Newcastle players, some of them went through relegation, they know what they need to, to do to get out of it and they're all coming together as a group and it's showing on the pitch, especially in the last three games. What about from West Ham's perspective? Oh, they'll, be, they'll be massively disappointed because, you know, the first two goals, mistakes, Terrible mistake from Dawson and Fabianski. The sending off as well. Ten men. I think Moise will be... You know, the first two goals, mistakes. Terrible mistake from Dawson and Fabianski. The sending off as well. Ten men. I think Moise will be, will be thinking, you know, they, they had a good go in the second half. But, you know, they've got this Chelsea game coming up now. If disappointment when he gets on the bus is the injuries. You know, they've got three or four players out, at least. Players that will be starting for the game next week against Chelsea. And you were worried about that at the beginning as well. Yeah. But now it's about how they react and they do have a tough game next in Chelsea. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think that you know Chelsea got games to play before that, but they've got a really strong squad, lots of bodies. I think he'd be desperate to get one or two of the players that yeah. are missing. Bryce. Bryce and Antonio have been the best two players and they're both out at the moment. I know other teams have had to accept injuries, but Creswell as well. Lingard came off. Dawson suspended. Yeah, I, I think with uh, them missing Antonio and Rice, Lingard's been the one to step up. He's come in, he's <clears> kind of been the life and soul of the party now. So to see him walk, on, walk off with a hamstring injury, that's very worrying for not only David Moyes, but um, West Ham fans in general. Let's now reflect on the first half. And Newcastle really dominated that first half. They were brilliant from the off. Yeah, and St. Max, man, get, getting on the ball. Well, we're going to see the, the first goal here, we, yes. <sighs> Yeah, but once he got on the ball, he was really positive, not just here, but on a couple of occasions. And I like what he does. I said to Andros, he sort of stunned it when he, when he tried to cut it back across Fabianski. And if you see it again, they react to Dawson's uh, 
miss control. He takes Mark Noble on. I don't think Nobles can do anything else. If mm. he challenges and misses it, he's through. So, you know, he has a go to try and win it. The first goal went, well, yes. Um, <sighs> yeah, but once he got on the ball, he was really positive, not just here, but on a couple of occasions. And I like the, what he does. I said to Andros, he sort of stunned it when he, when he tried to cut it back across Fabianski. And if you see it again, they react to Dawson's uh, miscontrol. He takes Mark Noble on. I don't think Nobles can do anything else. If he challenges and misses it, he's through. So, you know, he has a go to try and win it. We, we were saying his only chance of winning that ball was, was immediately. Because he's, he's going to get done for pace. So he had to win it immediately. He didn't. He still defends him well, sends him wide. But like Alan said, it was an unusual but very effective finish from St. Maximin. I think he's going straight in. Yeah. I think Fabianski can't get there. That could be a straight red, to be fair. Yes, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. He's, like I said before at half-time, it was an honest mistake and um, he's tried to make up for the, the bad touch and not, unfortunately it's, it hasn't gone right for him on this occasion. And then, Alan, five minutes later? Yeah, I mean, when keepers make this mistake, there's nowhere to go, is there? And it falls fantastic for Joel Linden. Look at this, yard out, just took it in and uh, <laughs> devastating for Fabianski. And he'll be devastated in that dressing room. He'll be apologising apologize to all the boys, but he's had a good season and... He, he's got no need to feel disappointed or to feel like he's let the boys down because, unfortunately, when you're a goalkeeper, it's just one of those things. And today, he didn't go his way, but I'm sure he'll um, bounce back from that for sure. What about from Joe Linton's point of view? Because any goal yeah. is something. And, you know, he has struggled this yeah. season and the Newcastle fans have been on him a bit. But he scored his third goal of the season. Yeah, I, I, I'd love to take one of those. Uh, like <laughs> I said at half-time, it's like at the time, it's a tap-in. Uh, next week, it's just three goals of the season. In a few weeks' time, he would tell his, his friends that it was a goal of the season contender because you just forget <laughs> about it in a few weeks, don't you? It's, it's another goal to the tally, and I'm sure that'll do him the world of good. He had a very good game in general, so yeah. hopefully now for the last six or seven games, he can really kick on. And we've spoken a lot about David Moyes, but what about Steve Bruce? How's mm. he feeling? He went through the ringer. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, leading 2-0, and Andrew said, no, are you in the dressing yeah. room leading 2-0 against 10 men? You're trying to say to the players, oh, come on, let's, let's go out there, let's, do, let's keep it tight, let's... Be... And then, bang, it all changes. Yeah. And you could see it at the end there when he just went... Pfft. You know, everything happened in that second half. Yeah, well, let's talk about the first half, actually, because the game plan, we were talking about it, he set them up perfectly mm. for it. Yeah, it was perfectly. Um, he knew his side probably couldn't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this very good West Ham side. Set them up in two banks. You can see there um, how deep they are. It's only really... Joe Linton and St. Maximan ahead of the ball. Almoran's pressing high as well, but the rest of them are in their shape. And nine, nine times out of ten, Newcastle's attacks came from West Ham turning the ball over, forced from um, the press from Newcastle, and that was one of them. And they did that time and time again in the first half. Yeah, I like the way they, they, they showed them inside. It was very, very tight as a back, mm. back three, back five. Showing West Ham inside, and there was nowhere to go. You can see they're trying to thread a ball through to Bowen. It was very, very difficult. And once they won the ball back, they did have the pace to counter-attack. And I think it was, it was perfect for this the way that West Ham played because they've got Lingard, they've got Bowen, they've got um, Four Nails. They've got players who all like to get into that pocket. They're not players that like to run in behind. So you, you get a solid bank of three, five, and then the two holders in, in front of them, it's very hard for them to get space in those pockets. And West Ham, all game, they struggled to get their, their key players um, in the right positions. And to be fair, they broke so well and perhaps the end product wasn't wasn't good enough but they did look dangerous yeah yeah they did impressive because of what happened last weekend against burnley and now they backed up points let's get an idea now of how the newcastle boss is feeling here's steve bruce 